Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today is day four of the Wayfarer sew along. For the sew along as you've seen in the last three days, I am making style uh, one from, two from uh, Wayfarer 2.0, but you can sew whichever for the sew along and qualify for the price. Today is what will be known in the history of so longs as pocket day. I swear, I think today 90% of the time we'll be making pockets. We'll start with the large zipper pocket in the lining, then we'll do the slip pen pocket, then we'll do the gadget pocket, then we'll do the bottle pockets on the gusset, and then we'll finish the day by sewing the gusset together, and tomorrow we'll finish the whole uh, backpack. So let's get started with the large zipper pocket. So for that one, you need your eight inch zipper and your um, lining. So piece N, which is the zipper pocket. So we're going to draw the pocket the same way we did yesterday. I'm going to be folding. This is the long pocket long inside zipper pocket which is piece N. I'm going to fold it in half right sides together and do a little crease with my fingers so I know this is the center where the crease is. So now I'm going to mark half an inch on both sides so I'm going to put a half an inch mark from the, from the crease and the sides on both sides. Because that's where my zipper will, zipper um, rectangle will start. Okay, and now using my Geeky Helper, I'm just going to draw the line using the half an inch part, not the three eighths, half an inch because I'm using a number five zipper. So I'm placing my, my pen right in that corner and my Geeky Helper parallel to that crease. So I can see the crease and there you go. And I'm only drawing on one side. So as you can see, to use the Geeky Helper, I'm drawing this line, this line, and one of the Vs. And now I'm moving on lower where the other marking point is. And I'm continuing the lines. Like this, like this, and like this. This is how you make your zipper opening when it's larger than the actual uh, opening in the Geeky Helper. Okay, so now you can see I have my uh, design right there. This one. Okay, let's take the large main panel, the lining part, because you have a main and a lining, and we're going to measure from the top three and a half inches. So three and a half inches from the top is right here. Okay, so we have that done. This is the exact same steps as we did yesterday. And now I'm going to place the um, panel so that this fold line that I have here so that the center is on that line so I'm folding it the wrong sides together right now and I'm placing that fold right at that three and a half uh, inch mark so this is where my three and a half inch line is I'm placing it I'm going to put a couple of pins on the sides so it doesn't uh, move around. Okay. 
And now we're going to open it and we're going to stitch that box. This pattern has two options for finishing. One is a binding method, which is the one I'm using, I'm going to be using, and one is a um, birthing method, which I prefer not to use because one, I love the look of the binding, it makes the edges like crisper, and two, I have pretty nails and birthing is a, is a menace to my nails. <laughs> so uh, if you are doing the birthing method you will um, leave this pocket open we'll get to that and i'll tell you if not you'll just close the pocket because we'll just be adding binding i did cut the binding on the first day so uh that's what we're going with all right now that that box is done look how pretty it is Let's do a little slit in the center with the seam ripper and then we'll cut with the scissors. I'm doing that V cut all the way to the corners as close as you can get it to the corners without snipping your thread. Okay. Now we're gonna pull the pocket through the opening that we just made and do a little finger press. If you're using cotton woven, so not vinyl, or not uh, canvas, although with canvas it might work as well. You can give this a good press and get those nice crisp edges here. I'm using Autotex water resistant canvas for this step, so it's pretty thick. But if you use a pressing cloth on Autotex, and I'm pretty sure on any water resistant canvas, with a pressing cloth you can definitely press this. So this is what it looks like. It's easier to see on the white background. And now you want to take your zipper and I'm going to grab some eighth of an inch double sided tape and put some along the zipper tape. purple. How gorgeous is it? I love it. All right, so let's peel that off. And you're going to center your zipper in that opening. Obviously the zipper teeth will go towards the outside, towards the lining. I don't have a preference which way I open this up, so but if you do, make sure that you follow that.
So I'll start on one side and adjust it as I go. Making sure that the zipper teeth are centered. Well, as best as I can. We're not going to stress over this inside pocket. I mean, we're not going to stress over anything, but especially not this inside pocket. Okay, and now let's sew around. And that opening. And this will also close those zipper teeth. zipper pull out of the way. Okay, now that the zipper is attached, we're going to close the zipper pocket on the back. If you're doing the birthing method, you will leave this bottom part open to birth the whole backpack through it. I'd rather not, so I'm just going to close by sewing all around the sides. Make sure that you move your lining out of the way, you don't want to stitch through that lining. And you are done. Pocket one is done. Next we have the pen pocket if you're going to do the pen cut, is if not just a slip pocket. And this pocket, you'll see it when you open that big flap on the front, big uh, closing part. So you need piece P for this, the pen or slip pocket. I don't think I'm going to add the pen markings, but we'll see. So for this, you can follow the method in the um, pattern and you're going to stitch from here down from here down leave this opening turn and top stitch I don't like to do that with water resistant canvas so what I'm going to do I'm going to place some double-sided tape on the edge on the long edge first okay on both long edges. OK. 
Okay. Fold it a quarter of an inch or so towards the inside and press. If you're using cotton woven or any thin woven, you can also press with your iron. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now we're going to do the same thing on the top and the bottom. And this saves me from, um, I, did, I only needed to do one side, never mind. Oh well, you only need the, um, you know, cut to go back a little bit. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold a quarter of an inch like so and then the same thing on the other side okay so now you have all your raw edges inside there and now I'm going to fold the wrong sides together and I'm going to stitch just the top. Well, or the bottom depending on how you look at it. So, you, I'm going to put this side on the bottom of my uh, um, bag so then I'm going to stitch right here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance that's the top of the pocket So your top of the pocket is stitched and this is what it looks like. Let's just place the pocket on the uh, main uh, main panel, main large panel it's called. And let's place it um, this goes three inches from the bottom. So we're going to measure three inches from the bottom. Like so. And I'm going to draw a line. And I'm going to add along the bottom, maybe an eighth of an inch of a um, Geeky Fuse double-sided tape, just to hold it in place, like so. And it also shows me where that marking is, since I can't really see it. And now, making sure that the edge that you just stitched it is at the top, we're going to center this pocket right there. I'm eyeballing it, but if you want to measure the center and center it, that's fine. And now we're going to sew all around the three remaining sides. And here you can add a rivet if you want, 
in the corner. And this is where you decide how you want to split this pocket. Because now it's just a simple slip pocket. As you can see on the back here. It's easier to see because it's white on with the thread. Okay, this is how it looks like the pocket. So it's a simple slip pocket. If you want to add like a pen or a separation for something else. I think it's too small to split it in half. Nothing will fit. So I don't know. I'll add one pen line just to add it. Not that I use a lot of pens, but let's measure one and a quarter from one side. And I'm going to draw a line just on one side. And then stitch along that line. And this will give me one pen. pocket. And this is our second pocket of the day. So pocket number two is done. And here is the pen. There you go. Pretty, right? Let's grab right now and work on the next pocket of the day, which is the gadget pocket that goes on the back panel. So I'm going to take the back panel, the lining. I don't need the foam or that. And the gadget pa uh, pocket. And you should have two for the gadget pocket. You should have a main and a lining. One is waterproof canvas, uh, the other text, and the other one for me is the uh, brief, uh, water resistant canvas. So now I'm going to start by placing this right sides together. Stitch along the top. Mm -hmm. Sorry. This is an easy pocket. Probably the easiest one to make out of all of them. Okay, then we're going to turn it and top stitch the edge this way your uh, pocket is wrong sides together and we're going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge to take this pocket and place it on your lining back panel like so and we're going to pin it in place and baste it in place along the edges. This is the simplest slip pocket. Just make sure that the raw edge is aligned. I'm basting at about less than a quarter of an inch. Just to hold it in place, basically. Uh, 
another pocket done. We are on a roll here. Okay, this is what it looks like. And I'm going to leave it big like this. I'm not going to make it any smaller. Okay, pocket number three, done. Let's move on to pocket four and five, which is your bottle pockets. So this is what we're adding to the sides, the bottle holder pockets. And we need pattern piece L for that that has two lining and two mains. In my case, they're all the same fabric. So I have two lining and two mains that I'm going to use. So we'll start with just one of them. And you also need to grab your little elastic, the two um, four inch elastic, a quarter of an inch wide. So I'm going to add this right sides together I'm going to stitch at the top. These are simply simple to make. Okay. I'm going to open it up just like we did the previous pocket. And fold. And I'm going to edge stitch, so a, less than an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Right here. And then with a half an inch seam allowance, I'm going to stitch one more time to create my casing for the elastic. Okay, using a bodkin, this is a bodkin, or a um, Safety pin, grab your elastic, one of the pieces, okay, and you're going to case it through, so run it through that casing. Depending on the material you're using, you might find this easier or harder. I would definitely not recommend vinyl for these pockets because it would be very hard to thread elastic on vinyl. If you do vinyl, I would not do, I would just leave it large like this, the opening. I would encase any uh, elastic. Okay, so I'm threading it. When I get to the end of this elastic here, I'm going to stitch that down so it doesn't fly away. Okay, almost there. Okay, so I'm going to stitch down that elastic. On one side. So it looks like this, Let's see, and continue threading this until my bodkin comes out on the other side and I'm pulling and I'm going to, no, this is not a great quality elastic, honestly, it's like super thin. So I'm going to pull it a little bit and then stitch on the other side. Yeah, my elastic is not great. I was in a rush when I ordered it off of Amazon. 
and I didn't get it from my regular supplier and it's thin-ish okay so this will probably uh, look a little more uh, structured on your case if your elastic is better I might change it for the other one uh, but this is your pocket go ahead and repeat the same steps for your second water bottle pocket and come back and we'll start working on the gussets gusset let's work on the gusset so we will grab the um, white gusset top which is piece E1 and you should have a main and a lining and then you want the only zipper remaining I believe which is the top I did add two zipper pulls to this one going in opposite directions and especially because you I have the water bottle I do need the two zipper pulls so now I'm going to place my zipper right sides together and pin it along this curve so along this bottom curve I want to pin my zipper So along this one. Okay. Right sides together and I will start from the edges and work my way in because the zipper does have a straight edge and the um, gusset is a curved edge. So you need to ease one into the other. You can also find the center of the zipper and the center of the gusset curve and match those first if you have a hard time aligning them. But it should be pretty easy. I don't find it very difficult at all. It fits perfectly. Like this. So we're going to go ahead and stitch with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. zipper pulls out of the way going to place your lining right sides together so you sandwich the zipper in there pin and stitch on top of the previous stitching line you can do it this in one shot but I'm not comfortable enough to stitch this only in one shot so I'd rather not seam rip anything because I didn't catch the zipper or stuff like that Sometimes an extra step, it's worth it. Okay, so this is what it looks like pinned. And now let's stitch. the zipper pulls so I'm going to stop and move my zipper pulls away okay. 
keep your raw edges aligned. As you can see, like I said every day, this is a, not a difficult pattern. It has a lot of steps, but they're easy steps and easy to do, nothing super complicated. Okay, let's turn this wrong sides together. And we're going to top stitch along the zipper edge, around the fold edge there. And if you want, you can definitely continue after your top stitch and sew all around to press the lining and the main together and make it one, one single piece because that's how you'll be treating it. I don't want to put any unnecessary holes in my vinyl but if you want, you can definitely baste along those sides. Like along these edges. Okay, so this part is done. Go ahead and grab your um, gusset, white gusset bottom. And you should have, that's piece E2. You should have a lining and the main for that one. And we're going to stitch this on both short ends. So first we're going to do the main. This is how it will look like. Okay. So this short, the, the side that has the zipper and your main, right sides together, like so. I'll just pin it in place. And this should be flushed, the edge of the zipper and this side should be perfectly aligned. And now I'm going to take the lining and place it right sides together with the lining. So see the zipper, the lining, and this is right sides together and make that sandwich over there. Now I'll stitch this with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. going to open it up and top stitch. So my bottom gusset is this Spells fabric and vinyl and the top is the uh, watercolor houses. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to take the main and place it right sides together, like so. Double check that your, your gusset has not twisted. Okay, and now I'm taking the lining and I'm bringing it right sides together, just like so. 
and we're going to stitch with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. to turn this and top stitch so now you should have like one big loop okay, one big loop Let's top stitch this part Gusset look. Okay, now get grab your pockets, the one you worked on before. The um, uh, I mean, I, we made a lot of pockets today. Grab the bottle holder pockets, and we're going to take one of them and place it where the zipper starts. Let me just double check that. About one inch above. Okay, so about one inch above um, let's measure one inch above that seam. So it's kind of like here. Okay. And so I marked this little dot here is one inch above. So what we want to do is place the zipper, the bottle holder right here. And I'm going to stitch first the two side seams. And yes, the bottle holder is a lot wider. That's what the, that's why we have that zipper there that in my case it's not really ruching, but it's okay. okay. And now on the other side, same thing, where we have that one inch line, we're going to pin just for now, just on the sides. Make sure you pin through all the layers. So you should have two layers for the pockets and two layers for the gusset. Okay, so let's stitch on the sides. now it will look like this with that big hole at the bottom and at the top so on the bottom we're going to create a pleat so we're going to squeeze this to the center like this this is my preferred way to add a pleat but you can do it whichever way you like so I like to squeeze this here and just fold so this will give me a nicely centered pleat like so Okay, so I'll do that again. So I like to squeeze this until I get that edge there in the center. And then I press the top down. And that gave me that beautiful centered pleat. So now I'm going to stitch the bottom. And yes, we're going to stitch 
the bottom with the raw edge right there. That's fine because we're going to uh, add a base on top of it. So the raw edge will be covered with that base that we're going to add in the next step. So this is what we have right now, one of the pockets done, you see this split right here and this opening for the bottle at the top. Go ahead and repeat the same step on the other side, on this side, to add your second bottle holder pocket and come back so we can add the, do the final steps for today. We have made it to the last step of the day. So take your base, the one that uh, you have previously fused your Decoville Heavy on, or if you haven't, just do it right now. And we are going to fold the short ends, half an inch. And for that, I'm going to use double-sided tape. You know how I roll. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape at both short edges. We don't need to work on the long one. Okay. And we're going to fold this down. Okay. And we're going to use this base to cover that raw edge of the bottom of the holder, the water bottle holder pockets. Because remember, they have a raw edge here at the bottom. So we're going to use that to cover it. Let's go ahead and find the center of the bottom. Okay, right here on both sides. That is the center of the bottom. And we're going to find the center of this piece as well. Okay. We did these two snips. And we're going to place wrong side to the right side, like so. Like this. So now I'm going to pin it in place and you will see that the folded edge here is covering the raw edge. So let's put a few pins, a few clips all around to hold it in place. Come on. There you go. Make sure that you clip, you clip through all the layers because you should have the lining layers as well. So everything is stitched together and same thing on the other side. You can see we made it to the other side and it's covering the bottom raw edge. So now there's no raw edge on that pocket. This is what it looks like from the bottom. We're going to go ahead and stitch all around that rectangle bottom piece, all, of, all around. Let's go ahead and do that now. And that's the last step for today. And you have your gusset ready for tomorrow.
this gusset will not only make the bottom sturdier, but it also covers the raw edge of the pocket. So I love that. And there you go. So this is what it looks like So You can see that beautiful unicorn main thread. And your gusset is ready. You have completed the many, many pockets of today. Um, you have your like five pockets done today and the gusset. So snap a picture of all your pieces that you worked on today and post it in the day four photo comments of the Sew Along album. You can find the Sew Along album in the backstage back room on Facebook. And I'll see you back here tomorrow when we'll be putting together the entire Wayfarer bag. Bye.